Good Miniature Monday, friends. Raj here, a.k.a. the Wisco Horn Dog. As the title suggests, today we are taking a look at black lining. As I use this on just about every model that I paint, I can't think of one recently that I haven't done it on. So this is something that is basically a standard operating procedure over in the, the Hobby Horn Dog household here. And it's pretty easy to, I think it's a good technique for beginners. If you haven't heard of it, all you're doing is going through and basically the crevices on the model and armor plates in between when two colors are touching, you're going in and creating a, a black line to clearly separate those colors. So it's usually used to separate two different colors, but if you have certain folds and stuff like that on a cloak or creases, you can use that as well to kind of go through. And we're gonna take a look at my Tuck Bee model here, and I actually use this technique. Okay, so hopefully you can see in this video here that I actually went through and black line one of the feet already. And around the boot there, I went down each crevice and kind of laid down a black line. So now I'm doing the other foot. So you can see all I'm really doing is going down the creases, kind of following the outlines, just basically presented on the model itself. So it's not a really sophisticated technique. Now there's a couple things to keep in mind when you're doing this. So black lining, I think is kind of a misnomer actually. You don't have to use black and I actually wouldn't recommend using black as sort of some common painter's wisdom is never use pure white, never use pure black. Um, unless you have a specific reason in mind. And it creates a more natural look, I think, if you don't use black. So actually in this video, I'm using the Reaper Blue Liner product, which I actually picked these up at Adepticon. They have a few different ones. Otherwise you could use like GW Dragonhoff Nightshade or maybe thin down some Scorch Brown or any kind of dark paint or wash. As long as you thin it enough, kind of to like a wash consistency, you're gonna have some pretty good luck. So as the technique goes, all you're looking to do is create a nice consistent line as you do this. So for me it helped, and maybe you can see in the video, to just kind of flip it around and so I could do the same kind of motion over and over so I can maintain you know, kind of the same depth, get the same thickness on my brush all the way through that line. And that seemed to, seems to work best for me. Now if, if it does end up a little wavy, I would actually go through and make that line a little thicker to try to take that out. I think that's where you can go wrong in this technique where it maybe turns against you is if you got a kind of a big wavy divisions in between all these parts it might look a little weird so if you can do, do a nice straight line and then you can always go back and make some touch-ups as always but that seems to work best for me it creates a nice model in the end nicely defined contrasted and nice and clean and i think if you're a beginner or a newbie that is definitely something I would add to my repertoire quite early. I think you'll really learn some brush control and stuff like that. But one thing is I did record the rest of the session of me doing the lining on that Tech Bee model. So I'm gonna put that up in a separate video. If you wanna watch that, you can basically see me go through the whole thing and check out the various techniques, redos I had to do. At the end, I did go through and um, Kind of had to fix one or two highlights on her arm but you can definitely do that or just leave it whatever works for you so hopefully you found that valuable next week we're going to take a look at the reaper liner products which i picked up at adepticon they're pretty cool they're specifically meant for lining obviously although i was talking with the sales guy there and he kind of uses them as washes as well which is interesting because Reaper's not known for having any washes or anything like that. So I'm going to check that out and we can maybe do some comparisons between the different liners and I think that'd be pretty cool. So now we're going to pop on over to this week's Hobby Desk. So you can see the Tech B is pretty much done. One thing is the basing on it isn't done. What I'm going to do is actually pull it out of that base and put it into a resin base that I'm painting separately. So I'm going to wait until I'm done with the Crabot and the Black Friar model that I'm working on. So I can just do all three bases at the same time and then we'll be good to go. Not much work on the Crabot, still in his current state. The Black Friar, however, I wanted to get 
base coated and you can see I'm going for a slightly different scheme as I mentioned last time so this is what I came up with it's going to end up with a little darker look overall but it's still going to use the same blacks and yellows that I've been using on my other models but I'm adding some red channeling a little red riding hood vibe here I was inspired <laughs> so hopefully that turns out I haven't done red for a while and this is going to be the only model with red on the force but I've got those other colors drawn it in and one thing with the infinity lore and background and everything is these are all kind of the disparate units and you're kind of bringing these various kind of different unit types together and kind of like a dirty dozen fashion so I think that's perfectly acceptable to use some different color schemes on these guys and I'm pretty pumped to finish this so in the upcoming week I'm going to either do the black fryer here or the cravat I haven't decided yet if we do the cravat you can look forward to a yellows tutorial in the future and then if I do the fryer I'm gonna try to double down on the face and kind of show you what I do for faces so those are in the pipeline I did receive my gremlin hand my gremlin hand from Bushido miniatures they actually sent me a whole gremlin I didn't need the whole gremlin again so now I have two gremlins one without a hand so I guess I could convert something up there but that guy I'm gonna finish I'm gonna attach that hand and then I'm gonna prime them and then start base coating by next week as well so for those following along at home mr. Rob Hone he said last week he would paint 10 pink horrors airbrush them he would base and wash his Necron kill team and he would finish his flamers of Zinch and I could see on Twitter that he was successful in that so good work Rob Rob has a website robhone.com where he uh, posts some random stuff and he is on Twitter as well so not too much going on with the horrors and the Necrons but you can see the flamer looks pretty cool nice and zinchy all together and he's got a gloss over him which I'm always kind of interested in gloss techniques on models when to use them and when not to and I think it looks pretty cool it adds a different dimension to the model so I think this is a nice slippery zinch model and I think it makes sense to gloss it and I think it looks pretty cool I'll be curious to see if the horrors get the same kind of treatment or if everybody's gonna be glossy or not I do think it should be limited in my opinion so an entire glossy army probably not too much to me but if you have some nice matte elements and work in some gloss I think that's pretty cool so I can't wait to see what Rob is up to and then for next week Travis at Hot Dice said he was going to paint a Spectre and a Prowler for Infinity so just two models it seems pretty easy but it took me two weeks on this Tech B so he's going to need all the help he can get so Travis I'm looking to see what you can do here man send me some pics well that is just about it for this week's good miniature Monday hopefully you learned a tidbit or two on this journey and if you are a fan of black lining please post below with the product you actually use I'm curious about what people are using and I've had different success with different products and I would like to keep my options open I'm always learning here just like you guys and in that vein please post if you have any other tidbits or anything I missed I'm learning just like you guys and I want to be the best painter I can be and thanks for subscribing sharing this video as always helps me out big time I will have that separate tech B video up kind of showing how I did the rest of the lining on that model if you're curious and I I think I took some photos for a before and after that'd be cool and you can see the final result um, I think I think that's it. I want you guys to keep on hobby horn dogging. Keep on keeping on, and I will catch you guys later.